Welcome to Vermont Today. I'm Terry Girolaman, and my guest today is uh, Anthony Polina, the next governor of Vermont. We're coming to you from Burlington, Vermont, on the shore of beautiful Lake Champlain. Um, Anthony, in the uh, last week, you pointed out some instances where Governor Douglas tried to take credit for programs that he was not central in creating. Can you tell us a little bit about those issues and why it was important for you to highlight this? Sure, well, I appreciate it. Uh, first of all, the reason why it was important to me to highlight these things was because I think a leader should be someone who draws people out and helps people find their voice and empowers citizens and encourages them to be involved. And when uh, the governor, as he does, takes credit for things that citizens have done, I think it does the opposite. I think it actually it disempowers people and discourages them a little bit. So in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a number of instances where the Governor Douglas has, uh, in a sense, taken credit for things that uh, were not his to begin with. One was he talked about uh, releasing a million dollars in weatherization funds to help uh, low-income people weatherize their homes this year. He did that as part of his announcement of the uh, winter emergency. And the fact is that his budget, when he submitted it to the legislature this year, had no increased funding for weatherization at all. And the added funds for weatherization were put in because of the legislature and because advocates pushed for that. So he made it seem as if you know, he was pleased to be releasing this extra money when in fact his budget didn't include any extra money at all. He also, in that same discussion about how he wanted to respond to the it, problems that people would be facing this winter, he talked about uh, making it possible for more people to use their debit cards or food stamp cards at farmers markets this summer as they were because of the increased price of food. And he talked about expanding, at his direction, they would be expanding that program to about 15 farmers markets. Again, it wasn't true in two senses. One is it wasn't being expanded to 15 uh, farmers markets. It was being expanded to a few more. But more importantly, it wasn't at his direction. This was a program that has been in place for a number of years and is really operated by groups like the Northeast Organic Farmers Association and others. Uh, they inspired that, you know, that effort. They maintained that effort. And actually, the great majority of the money for that effort is federal money. So again, the governor was saying, at my direction, we're going to expand this food stamp program to more farmers markets. It wasn't really true, and it certainly wasn't at his direction. The third thing was uh, an insert that was put into newspapers that went around the state uh, called Vermont Harvest, and it's about Vermont foods and Vermont agriculture. And in that uh, publication, which of course is done at taxpayer expense and then distributed at taxpayer expense, uh, there was a, an introduction in which the Vermont Secretary of Agriculture said, among other things, that our current governor had um, initiated the Buy Local Movement in 2003. And I just thought that was, frankly, kind of a ridiculous statement to say that our current governor, first of all, has started any kind of movement I found to be just, you know, incorrect. He's not, he's not a movement builder, let's, let's face it. Um, but the fact is that the buy local movement in Vermont has, first of all, been going on for a long time. And it's really the work of a lot of farmers and uh, consumer activists and a lot of other folks who have come together to, to build this buy local movement, which is doing well in Vermont. In fact, I pointed out that for a number of years, uh, 30 years ago, quite honestly, I had served on the board of the Northeast Organic Farmers Association and had helped organize conferences and farmers markets and meetings and all kinds of programs. And we were talking about the buy local movement back then. And frankly, Jim Douglas was not around in those, was not a part of those conversations. He wasn't in the room. So I wanted to make it clear to people that when we talk about a buy local movement, we're talking about a citizens movement, consumers and farmers and others. And it's really important that we continue to recognize the work that citizens do and not have politicians try to claim credit for. You know, some people have said, well, but politicians always claim credit for things they don't do. And I said, well, it's one thing to claim credit for something a, another state senator does or your opponent does that's sort of in the arena of politics. But let's not take credit for the work that citizens do. And when we talk about the buy local movement, frankly, uh, the cafeteria ladies around the state and the folks who cook in institutions around the state have done a lot more than, uh, than, than the governor has. And 
the other thing I would just point out when we talk about buy local, um, our current governor runs radio ads and he explains to people that if we spent more of our money on local food, it would create more economic activity in Vermont, which of course is great, be more money kept locally. And he says in the ad, he says, buy local, it's just that simple. But the fact is, if you go into a state institution, if you go into a state prison or a lot of our colleges, you know, the hamburgers are from the Midwest and the milk is from Massachusetts. So while he talks about initiating the buy local movement, the fact is the state of Vermont does not really do a good enough job at buying local. We're doing a little better than we used to, but there's a lot more that we can do to make sure that uh, we buy local products, that money stays here in Vermont. You know, actually, I, I want to mention what this is, well, not an aside. It, when the governor was responding to this conversation or the administration, was responding, one of the things that they said, they said, well, if the state had, this was in response to what I had said, they said, well, if the state had had to buy local and it was a requirement, then local farmers would charge more for the product because they would know that they had a captive market. Now, first of all, nobody's saying the state would have to buy everything local at any price that it might be out there. You know, you do it within reasonable parameters. But for the administration to essentially say that farmers would raise their prices to take advantage of the state if it had to buy local is an insult to those farmers, number one. And the other thing, quite honestly, is we should be paying farmers more for, for local food, to tell you the truth. And when you compare, what, when you look at what's going on with food costs around the country, the cost of importing food here into Vermont, mass-produced food, mass-processed, transported thousands of miles, the price of food is going up. And if we're going to be paying more for food, frankly, I think Vermonters would like to pay more to local farmers when they buy that food so that money stays here in the local economy. So anyway, bottom line is, uh, whether it's weatherization funds, the use of food stamps at farmers markets, the buy local movement, um, I don't think it's fair for the governor to be taking credit for things that citizens do. And I, I frankly just don't think it's right for the governor to do that. I think we should be encouraging citizens and pointing out the good things they do and not trying to take credit for it. Isn't it actually bizarre that he should take credit when the Democratic legislature has passed a measure and then the Republican governor takes credit? Uh, his own party may disown him. No? Well, <laughs> well, that's true, too. They might, might want, well, but it is an election year, I guess, so he wants to take credit for a little bit of, for as much as he can. And, uh, you know, that's why one of the things that has been sort of discussed a lot is that the governor, this administration, has, I think, of over a dozen, might be 15, uh, public relations people working for the administration now and you know their job is to do everything possible to make the administration look good and you know there are clearly a lot of issues going on out there that don't look so good you know we've lost a lot of jobs you know we have more homeless people you know cost of housing uh, puts it out of reach of a lot of folks so I think on the one hand this governor is grasping at anything he can possibly get that he could claim credit for because there's a lot of people out there who are hurting and who are really ready for a change, but are saying, you know, um, things are not getting better in Vermont. So maybe, uh, I guess I don't blame them for trying to claim credit for things. I just think it's wrong. <laughs> well, we're running out of time now. If people want to volunteer for your campaign for governor, what types of things can they do? Well, there's a lot that they can do. They could start by remembering that campaigns can be fun as well as, well as a lot of work. Uh, there's always work to be done in the office. Our major office happens to be here in Burlington. I'll give you the number and the, how to contact in a minute. But we have folks um, in other areas of the state as well. And um, there's like I said, office work to do uh, to help with you know, everything from mailings and design work. We're always looking for people to invite us to their communities and have events that I can attend or to bring us around town and introduce me to other people. Um, we look for people to march in parades, quite frankly, which is a fun thing to do. Um, we do operate a phone bank, and we've got folks who are going door to door, you know, talking to their neighbors in the evenings as well. So there's a lot of things that people can do to, to plug in. They can go to a website, which is anthonypolina.com, and connect there, or they could call us up. Not everybody likes going online all the time. And the phone number is 864-2008. So it's 864-2008. And uh, they could reach the campaign office, the Burlington office there, and we can plug them into activities either, you know, in Chittenden County or in the Montpelier area or down in Rutland or Brattleboro or wherever they may be.
Well, Anthony, it's been very interesting talking to you again, and uh, you can count on my vote.